Hi everyone, I want to present you today um, a friend of me, uh, it's uh, Robert Robert. So uh, Robert is working with uh, people who have difficulties in life. Um, so Bob, hi. How are you? Fine, and you? Doing great. Yes, good. It's a pleasure for me to present you in, on my channel, on my uh, YouTube channel. How do you describe your job? What are you doing on your job? Well, really what I'm doing is trying to help people come to a place in their life where their relationship with God is number one, where they seek wisdom and truth and help them overcome the things of the world that has hurt them betrayal, drugs, living in sin, doing the wrong things. So, if, because of all I've been through, God has blessed me to help others by sharing His wisdom and His truth. And for me, the only way to the Father is through the Son, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And He gives us His promise through His Word, which is the Bible. So as you seek Him, you get to know Him by His Word and by the Holy Spirit. And the only way to the Father is through the Son. It's a very narrow path, but mm -hmm. it works great for counseling. Yes. And uh, what do you think about people that, like, judge the Bible and judge Jesus and God and they, they don't trust that part of them because it's a part of each other? Well, first of all, those that would come against God and against the Bible, we're to forgive them because they don't have a personal relationship with them. So the key is not to condemn them because they don't believe, but to love them into the kingdom. Because God is the kingdom. Yes. The spiritual realm, the physical, all is overseen by our Heavenly Father, who gave His only Son, that's Jesus Christ, that would die for us to give us a relationship with the Father. And everything I'm saying is not me, it's what the Bible says, and I yes. choose to believe what the Word of God says. So by doing that, believing in the Word of God, my faith in the Word overcomes the sin and the things of the world. So the counseling is all scripturally sound. I won't say to you, well, this is my opinion. What I'll say is, this is what the Word says, and that helps, you know, get the truth out. Yes, yes. So, where are we going next? <laughs> <laughs> we, we have a friend who's come, come in. <laughs> and how you help people? Basically, I hold their hand and I walk with them through parts of the Bible that they would understand the very beginning before the rest of the truth and wisdom comes in, is to believe there is a God, the Father, that did what the Bible says it did, that He okay. offered His only Son to die for us. And that not only did He die, but He rose again from the dead, returned to the Father, and sent us the Holy Spirit. If you believe that, and you confess it, that's called being born again. So if I can help lead someone to Christ, where they say, Lord, you are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. I believe you died for me. And because you died for me, I now receive your forgiveness. And I enter in through the Son to the Father. So if I can lead someone in what they call the sinner's prayer, so they start understanding spiritual things, not just logic of the Word, but the spirit of the Word. Because yes. the Word is life. Yes. Each word, each thing that you bring into your heart, mind, body, and soul helps you grow. So my role in life to help a person is say first, if they do not believe, to encourage them to believe. So that's the first step. Yes. And, you know, people meet you when they are ready. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all, every time it's like that. People are on the road for a reason. On our road and we learn we are... <clears throat> in constant learning, you know, and this is the way to, the way of God is the way to, to 
to trust the, the it's the trust of everything. I agree with that. To go a little further, once you've accepted that there is a Father God and He has a Son and there's a Holy Spirit, so Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit always line up with the Word of God. And we had talked about this the other night. If you believe the Word of God, which is constant and never changes, over your own feelings, which go from one place to another, and that Word becomes your anchor, you can hold on to that. Whatever God says about you, you can trust. What you say or think about yourself changes. Yes. It might be good mood, bad mood. God's love is constant. Mm -hmm. His mercy and grace and forgiveness is always there if you ask for it. So speak, and it shall be given, or ask, knock, and you shall find. Everybody's heard those expressions, but when you really believe and you really seek, yeah. God is going to answer your prayer of what you spoke. Yeah. So learning the Word of God is the second part. First believing, and then entering in by faith to trust what the Word says. Then it brings the light yes. and the love, and you get out of being selfish, you get out of being self-condemning, you yeah. start being thankful for what yes. gift He has given us. The grace. The, exactly. And that's the beginning of the healing. Because we've all been hurt. Yes. We've all sinned against others and others have sinned. And now it's that relationship being yeah. reconciled. And in yeah. some cases, resurrected. Some relationships are dead. Yeah. There was so much pain and hurt, there's no more. Yeah. But just like Jesus was dead, completely dead in the grave, mm -hmm. the Father said, come back, and Jesus arose from the dead. doesn't seem logical. You have to believe that by faith. Yes. But if you do, you're saved. Yes. It's, a lot, and it's like a lot of things. We have to believe. Amen. Amen. And with the belief comes the responsibility. Yes. You know, when you say, He's my Savior, that's great. But the Word says that He's your Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. He'll save you, but he also wants you to obey him. Because with obedience to the Word of God, the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill, that, you know, you know, everybody knows the Ten Commandments. Very few of us can obey any one yeah. of them. We're all human. We're guilty yeah. of sin in the natural. But God said, I will find a way to reconcile your sinful human behavior by offering my Son to bring you back to me. If you enter into my kingdom, you'll enter in through my son. So that's how we overcome our sinful nature. All of us want sin, because it's natural. <clears throat> yeah. But when we walk in the Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, we can overcome the sin. So that's where, where I can help. Yeah. And anyone that believes can share their testimony, what God did for me. I yes. was one of the worst sinners in the young ages, and even when I was married. and I had to go through great destruction. Yeah. I didn't have to, but I did. And God still brought me through it. Yes. And now because I've been hurt and healed so many times, now I want to give the gift of healing yes. that God has given me. Yes. So that's what how it works. You give and you receive <clears throat> in the same time. Yes. Every moment. And what is the change <clears throat> you see in the people when you work with them? Well, you and I have had uh, maybe two or three weeks together talking about spiritual things, yes. angels, healing, med meditation, and we agree that is a lot of that's very truthful from the Bible. And then as we talked the other day, I said, but you know, all these gifts that you have come from the Father through the Son. And you knew about angels, but you didn't ever make that commitment before where you said, Jesus Christ, I mm -hmm. believe in you as the only Son of God. And when we did this the other night, we prayed, it was the beginning. And then we prayed the other night, and this morning you said, wow, what a change. So in your life I see the yeah. changes as you're starting to believe, not just about the gifts, but who the giver is. We can all be thankful we have gifts, but yes. do you, when you start appreciating the greatest gift is what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us. And when you believe that, and you seek Him through His Word, and you seek Him through listening to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit and the Word always line up together. Very consistent. Your feelings, left and right. 
the Word of God, the Spirit of God, the, the love, mercy, and grace, always there, if you want it. Yes. In faith. <clears throat> It's, it's a gift. He says, here's my gift, but you have to receive it in faith. Yes. So if I can share that gift with you and you receive it, that's the beginning of a, a transformation. Yes. And we talked about that in the Bible, in the book of Romans, it says the that you are in a cocoon and the old things have passed away and you're going through metamorphosis like a mm. caterpillar becomes a butterfly. When the butterfly comes out, he's free. So there is liberty and freedom. And we all look for that liberty and freedom. That's it. That's the answer. So that's why we are here, <clears throat> to find the liberty, the freedom in everything. Amen. Amen. Now yeah. that freedom carries a responsibility. Freedom wasn't free. It cost Jesus Christ his life. Yes. Just like our, the soldiers, the American soldiers, they were willing to give up their life that we might live free. So those young men and women that serve in the armed forces give us freedom, but they were willing to die for our freedom. Mm -hmm. And that's the same principle that the Lord Jesus Christ did. For us to have true freedom from sin and death and sickness and overcome the, the challenges of life, Jesus knew that he came for one purpose, to lay down his life for you and I, so that we might live in Him. Because we're one. Yes, yes. He's the head. He said, you're my part of my body. So when we speak and where we go, we're an extension of the love of the Father through His Son, through His Word. So that's the connection. Yes. So Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for your response. And <clears throat> what is the, like, why, what is the advice you can tell to people who wants to make that change right now in their life? Like dealing with difficulties and the, they don't trust uh, anything, any, any, anybody in their life, so they're like in, in big trouble, trouble in their mind. What is the, the advice you can say? The first thing I can say is surrender. Give up trying to do it your way. If your way has brought you pain, suffering, relationships ending, not no confusion, fear, doubt. Most people at one time, including myself, have been through every one of those emotions, fear, doubt, anxiety, yes. depression. And the only thing I can say, say, Lord, I can't take this anymore. I need you. I'm willing to accept you, believe in you, <clears throat> and the last thing is I'm willing to obey you. Nobody wants to give up their freedom to obey somebody else. Yeah. But in doing that, the true freedom is forgiveness of your own sins and mm -hmm. being able to forgive others. So the greatest advice I can say is first, forgive yourself, forgive others, because Christ yes. is willing to forgive you if you ask Him to. So stop, stop judging. <clears throat> Exactly. Like Stop judging yourself, judging others, and certainly many people are angry at God. Yeah, <clears throat> but we are here for experiencing life and to heal ourselves, to learn. But you you say that people are angry to God. A lot of people are angry, but it's not the fault of God. Right, that anger... If you direct the anger for your own failures to God, you've missed it. You've been deceived. Yeah. There is a God and there is a Satan. Satan's one goal is to steal, kill, and destroy. The Word says that. Your faith in God, he wants to steal it. Your hope and trust in God, he yeah. wants to steal it. He wants to get you to doubt and not believe. And God says, trust me. Believe in me. Believe what I've done for you. If you do, yeah. you are going to have eternal life and you're going to have a better life of abundance when you're here on earth. So surrender and forgive. Now the real meaning of forgiveness is very important. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows it as a word, like forgive. Yeah, but what it, what it really means, you're ready to give love to somebody mm -hmm. before they deserve it. Yes. Forgiveness isn't them doing something right that they earn your love. Forgiveness is you making the decision to love them unconditionally. Yes. 
even before they've done the right thing. Because yes. God died for us and yes. gave us before we even recognize Him. So the principle is there. It's hard to forgive to someone that hurts you so much. But when you forgive, you forgive with your heart and not your head. It's That's right. It's the only way to forgive with the heart. But a lot of a lot of people say, um, "I forgive, but it's still in me," you know. And when you say "but," it means you really haven't forgiven. Yeah. I forgive them, but I don't like them. If you forgive them, there's like a condition, <clears throat> and you right. know, it's it's and not done. There's a uh, a part of the heart is broke. Still broke, it's still broken, yes. So, yes. so thank you for this uh, this short moment, this short presentation. I hope this will help people who are in um, in problems, who lives problem, and who destroy themselves. Keep going on the right way and put God, Jesus, and. Um, Holy Spirit and you and uh, keep going on the love of the God of God that's that's well said yeah and I, it was such a pleasure to meet you and learn from you and I think God has brought us together for a purpose yes and when you're open to see that these are not coincidences no that God has brought you here to the United States to this home to be part of what we have here and to share what you bring as your gift and for us to share what our gift is. And yes. so there's growth in this. It's so wonderful. So I thank you for bringing your gift of love and healing and meditation. And you have a lot of gifts. And I'm very, my pleasure to meet you. And as I counsel you, it helps me. So every time you know, the teacher becomes the student. And the student becomes the teacher. And that's the interaction of the yes. body of Christ. So yes. now you are my sister in Christ. Yes. And God the Father and Jesus his Son and the Holy Spirit. We are all one in him. Mm. And when you feel that in your heart and you show that love by reaching out, that these hands become the hands of God. Yes. Just like your hands had a healing uh, ministry in yes. your heart and you spoke words of encouragement, that means you're bringing hope Instead of discouragement, yeah. you're encouraging people to believe the best yeah. for what they can be in Christ and in the world to help the community. Yeah. So. Sometimes it's hard to change because when, when we don't know where we are going and you have just to trust. Sometimes people are not ready to, to do that thing and just focus on trust mm, true but I what what do you have to say like for this like if people are um, are not ready to trust what can you say about that like, then if someone I meet is not ready to trust I pray in faith that God will touch them give them desire to trust mm -hmm. so as an intercessor prayer is the most powerful gift that we have yeah so when I pray Lord help someone send the right angel the right person to get them to start seeing this truth in your word and the truth will set you free from the things of the past that have separated you yeah. from the true love of God so that's what I, I pray when someone doesn't trust it somehow that he would give me the right words to speak or someone would speak to them and they, their heart would be softened and their pain would be taken so that they can receive the full blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So that's how trust is built. So, believe in you and thank you and God bless you, my friend. Thanks.